Hi. So today we are going to talk about one of the questions of recursion. So while we are discussing this question of recursion, this is a kind of, I'll say, simple problem, not the very basic one, but you will need to have some sort of knowledge of recursion in case you want to solve this problem. And in case you are unable to solve this problem and you go through this video, so you will understand a lot about recursion. So it's really important that you go across the video and you also try and solve on your own okay so first we will try and understand the question the question once we understand there isn't much of logic part you know so how it goes is you have to understand the question and then you have to see how we are going to implement this in recursion so that's how it's going to be okay the question is pretty simple and then we have pretty simple logic we just have to understand and we just have to try that how do i write the recursive code and this is the problem many of us face, you know, when we talk about recursion. So we'll see that in this particular question. So let's just first understand the question. So what the question says, as you can see, it's one of the questions of my code platform at PrepBytes. So let's first understand the question. It is one of the initial questions of recursion. So the question says, PB Mentor believes recursion is a very important concept. Hence, she wants you to practice recursion properly. That's what I believe as well. So now let us start practicing recursion with a simple problem. You have to print a pattern using recursion. Given an input n, the pattern looks like this. So you have to print a pattern over here. Let's just understand what is the pattern. So the pattern is you are given n. The pattern goes as follow n a of i a of i plus 1 n. So I see that it, the pattern starts from n and ends at n. And in between, we have some continuous numbers. Let's see what is this AI, AI plus 1, AI plus 2. Okay. So here, if AI is greater than 0, then AI is equal to AI minus 5. Okay. I'll repeat this again. If AI is greater than 0, then AI is equal to AI minus 5. Else, AI plus 1 is equal to AI plus 5. It will be a decreasing sequence from n till AI is less than equal to 0. And then it will be an increasing sequence till n. See sample test cases for better explanation. I think I'll just see the sample test case. So here we have n is equal to 16. Then we have output 16, 11, 6, 1, minus 4, 1, 6, 11, 16. So I think it's going to be 16. Achha. So this is a of i plus 1 is equal to a of i minus 5 for a i greater than 0. Okay, so here we have 16. 16 minus 5 is 11. 11 minus 5 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, and we have 5 minus, sorry, 1 minus 5 is minus 4. So what happens is that for ai greater than 0, we have ai plus 1 is equal to ai minus 5, else a of i plus 1 is equal to ai plus 5. So what it says is that as soon as we get something less than 0, we'll start adding 5. So we have minus 4 plus 5, 1, 1 plus 5, 6, 6 plus 5, 11, and 11 plus 5, 16. So we have to start printing from 16, and we have to end at 16, and this is what we are going to do. So as it is saying, first it will be in decreasing order, and then it will be in increasing order. Okay, so that's how it's going to be. So let's, let's just, uh, you know, start this particular thing. Okay, so I have understood the question pretty much. So we'll have a sequence starting from n, and ending at n. Then we'll have a decreasing sequence, and once we have something less than 0, we'll have the increasing sequence. As you can see the example here, their example is 10. For 10, it should be 10, 5, 0, 5, and 10. Okay, yeah. So it says sequence from 11. Yeah. So this is what it is going to be. Okay. So let's see the input output format. I hope you have understood the question pretty well. If you haven't understood the question, I'll suggest you that pause the video, read the problem statement try to understand the problem statement you should be very clear with it and then you can just proceed further maybe you can just restart the video okay so now let's just see the input format output format input is first line contains an integer t denoting the number of test cases for each of next t lines each line contains an integer n so you'll be given t here t is 2 then you are given for each line let's for two lines we'll have n so n is 16 and 10 okay for each test case on a new line, print the required pattern. So for 16, this is the pattern. For 10, this is the pattern. So this is how input output is going to be. The constraint is t will have value from 1 to 6 and n will have value from 0 to 2000. Okay. So that is my code. 
now i have to write the recursive code for this so i just want you to see how we are going to approach and reach towards our recursive code so what happens is that we we'll have to do some sort of thinking in here and we should be clear with the recursion thing and if you're clear with the recursion thing in terms of how the you know stack gets filled how the return happens and how the calling happens then you should be able to solve this problem so try this problem on your own and then we'll discuss how we can solve this problem okay now let's try and see how we're going to write the code for this uh, quickly telling you what is the problem statement what we saw was that you'll be given and number n and you just have to print a pattern so let's say if n is equal to 6 you have to print a pattern like 6 1 minus 4 1 and 6 and if the pattern is let's say 10 then it's going to be 10 5 0 5 and 10 okay so now we have to come up with the code or the solution you can say now what happens many a times is that uh, whatever knowledge we have might not be you know uh, we might not be able to come up with a solution directly or easily so we somehow have to do some kind of you know hit and trial or maybe some sort of observation or just whatever we knowledge we have we will go around so that is one of the way of solving the problem that we are going to use in this particular session okay so now let's say what we can do is we can just do one thing let's see that what i can do so whatever knowledge i have had in recursion till now if my recursion is clear is that i can maybe you know write code for this part i can write code for this part or i can write code for this part and i can write a separate code for this part let's first do this thing because if you are here in this question solving question number two at the provides platform then i am assuming that you should be able to do this your, this concept of yours must be clear and you might have seen this in the video as well okay now let's try and do that okay so whenever we have to write the code what are the few things that we have to keep in mind in case of recursive code is what are the operations we have to perform here in this case the operation is going to be printing the values or print n okay now the other thing is what is going to be the base condition so i'm first talking about just printing one part of the uh what's it this pattern okay so here my base condition as you can see is that i should stop the if my n becomes less than equal to zero we'll see what we will do in this base condition other thing is that what is going to be the parameter and how the parameter is going to change. So here my parameter will be n. This is one thing I know. We'll see if more parameters are required. Right now I think n is there. And we'll just keep on doing n minus 5 because it's, you know, 10 minus 5, minus 5 again, this thing again. I'm just talking about this part. And the other thing is that what's going to be the return type. So we have to figure out these particular stuffs and the thing is that how the operations are going to perform if i have to put a print statement where the print statement should be okay so let's just try and write the code okay so let's say the function is called print num i'll have the parameter int n i want the i won't close the bracket we'll see if nothing more is required we'll simply close the bracket okay my base condition is that if n is less than equal to zero okay so now if n is less than equal to zero what we have to do we have to one thing okay one thing i know for sure is that we have to return okay we'll see if there's anything that could be done and now the other thing is that i'm going to call this function again and again with the parameter n minus 5 so i'll simply do print num sorry print num n minus 5 these are the things that i know for sure and I don't see anything, any return thing happening. I'll just do void. Okay, now the question is where do I put this particular print statement? Okay, so let's just whatever we have written, see how it's going to work. So let's say if my n is equal to 5 or let's say 6 initially. So n is 6 here. I check if it is less than 0. No, then I'll simply print n minus. Then I'll simply call the function again n minus 5. Then again, n changes. So I think that if I put my print statement here, it should be a good place though i haven't left much space let's say i just put print n here okay i have just kept my print statement here and uh, i don't see anything else i need to do if n is less than zero i think the code is that this is what i think you know let's say i have written the code i just have to verify let's try and dry run this code once okay so let's say my n is equal to six initially and we'll also make the stack so initially n is equal to six six goes inside I print n, 6 gets printed, this particular condition is false, again n minus 5, 1 gets inside the stack, again 1 gets printed, 
n is less than or equal to 0 no n minus 5 minus 4 gets into the stack and then we have print n minus 4 gets printed we check that if n is less than or equal to 0 yes n is less than or equal to 0 we simply return so when we return we come back here there is nothing to be done again we come back and this is how you know so let's say we are here minus 4 we return when we return we come back here if there would have been some sort of operations here that would have happened there's nothing like that we again come back here and then eventually we go to the main function which was called which called this function so this is 6 1 minus 4 this is done so now I have written this code and since I have already done this part now other option that we have is that we write a separate code for this particular part this is one way but what if we have to write a single code or let's say a single method for both this and this so what I'm saying is that the whole pattern should be printed using a single method now I have to modify this code such that what should happen is that this particular part should also get printed so let's just see that how was our stack and again we will do some sort of observation here to understand that how we can do that okay so this has been our stack now if you can see that this value and this value is same this value and this value is same so what happened is that initially it was minus 4 we have already printed 6 1 minus 4 when we come back from here to here so when we do return the value of n goes back from this gets popped out from the stack and the value of 1 goes back to 1 now exactly at this point I want to print this one right I have my one with me I just have to print it and as I've told you that if there would have been some statement after this particular line when I do the return that particular statement would have got printed so why not I simply do print n here I print my n here again so what will happen is that as soon as we do the return here when we have minus 4 we come back our n becomes 1 but it's there in the stack this particular line gets executed one gets printed again one gets printed there is nothing else so this gets out of the stack now we have 6 again after returning we come here 6 gets printed and again 6 is removed from the stack and we have nothing and we go back to main so as you can see that we got our pattern printed here so one thing you could see is that we solved this problem we couldn't directly come with the solution but we did some sort of observations we whatever we knew we wrote the code okay so this is how the code is going to work now let's just go ahead and write the code so basically we have the code in here now we just have to use the language C, C++, Java whatever language we follow we have to use that particular language and just convert this into a proper code that could be run in the compiler let's try and do that so we have seen how are we going to write the code so let's just write the code in C language so I've already taken n and t as variables I've already taken t as test case I've already taken as input and we'll be running this loop t times for all the test cases and inside the loop the first thing that we will do is we'll take n as the input now let's just try and write the method so the method that we discussed was going to be print num let's say so we are going to pass n since there is no print num let's just try and write so we'll have void print num so as you can see that if you're very clear with your uh, you know implementation from beforehand writing code becomes really easy so we just have to convert that into proper syntax and stuff we'll have int n and then we'll have the base condition that if n is less than equal to 0 we return We'll have a print statement here, I think. Yeah. We'll have printf person d space comma n. Okay. Then we have we'll call the function again with n minus five, and then we'll have another print statement just copy this one okay okay so that is going to be my code so I'll have one new line print statement here because the output between the two new lines because the output should be new line okay so now this is going to be my code let's just run this and see if things are working fine 
so let's just give the output first one was 16 okay I get the right output and then another one was 10 okay let's just try and submit this code on Prabytes my code platform okay so that's accepted so that's how the code is going to work if your answer wouldn't have accepted obviously one thing just like we dry run our code we made the stacks we saw all the function calls so this is really necessary in recursion that you make the stacks again and again dry run the code it will make your understanding more and more clear and better is your understanding better will be your capability to solve questions of recursion okay so make sure you write on your own and you try and submit your code <laughs>